So this is how you can spot a player. In this video, I will share with you high value and low value game tactics from men such as make her jealous by coming across genuine. If she's beautiful, keep her intrigued by not complimenting her. And many more game tactics I will break down in this video from men so my queens be aware. Hello, my name is Greta Berishita. I'm dating and relationship coach for women. For the awesome high value woman secrets, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And just before, I will share with you those 20 game strategies from men so you don't get played and manipulated. Don't forget to take my free self-awareness test to find out are you a woman of high value or low value, which I will drop down in the video description box below. And if you love my merch, chase goals and not the drama, you can always get it in my YouTube store. So in this video, my ladies, I will break down for you 20 game strategies played by men that are very, very popular. I have come across I think all of them, to be honest, I experienced them all myself, if not all, at least 95% of them, and not just once, but multiple times. Majority of these strategies are from the book by Neil Strauss, and the book is called The Mystery Method, How to Get Beautiful Women into Bed by Mystery. So ladies, I really recommend you to read this book, as I said, when I reflect back on guys that I've been on dates with, I would say 70% used these strategies straight from the book. Other about 30%, I would say used some of these strategies from the book. And without further ado, let's start with the game number one. And I must say, I really, really do not get this one. But now when I reflect back on some dates that I've been on, I can see which guys have been using this method. And the method is to create for yourself a drama-filled chaotic life. Do everything what is sexually possible, do everything what you can get away with. Uh, basically live as immorally wrong as you can get away with. It's actually recommending for men to be very, very toxic, low value men, but it's rephrasing it in a way that if you will live a life full of drama and full of chaos, you will be a high value man as your social status will be high. This type of strategy does work with women that are very, I would say money focused, like shiny things that are very naive, and that are focusing more how the person looks on the outside rather than the inside. Some of these girls do see these type of guys as a catch. For me personally, this was the number one thing that would turn me off in these guys. Because what they would do, they would talk so much about their life, about the drama in their life, about this girl or that girl, and that would just put me off and so much because I would just look at them as totally toxic men who don't have self-control, who are irresponsible, who are immature, who have toxic priorities in life. And the most important, don't make me feel special because I don't know about you girls and I really don't know how it works with you girls, but I am, when I am interested in a guy, I want to feel like I'm the only girl in the world rather than him being focused on everyone else but me. So I really don't get how the strategy could work with any girls apart from women that really have a very, very, very low self-esteem. Number two, it is recommended for guys to have this peacock type effect. So to look really, really good when we go to a club. 
And now when I'm reflecting back and I'm remembering to the places I used to go to, guys who would, you know, have nearly like designer suits or some guys would wear something a bit extraordinary like a hat in a nightclub, which I used to find very weird as it's obviously attention-seeking detail. I mean, why would you wear a hat in a nightclub? So the goal is to have this peacock effect so you stand out and you get attention. Any kind of attention is glamorized in a book, whether it's good attention or bad attention, as long as the attention is drawn to you, you are put on a pedestal. You know, as we say, there is no bad publicity as long as you're getting it, that's the key. I definitely disagree with this type of statement because when you have a lot of drama in your life and you have a lot of chaos in your life and you sleep with tones of women, long term you will be getting a lot of bad publicity. Long term eventually you will start to feel depressed because you will start to feel guilty by bringing so much toxicity in other people's lives, by ruining their lives, by using people for your own satisfaction. But anyway, the short-term game is to look like a peacock, have couple girls on your side, as that way you come across as a catch and you will attract more masculine, low-value women that fight for your attention. Number three, it is recommended to have women on rotation. So for example, if the girl cancels a date with you, don't cry about it, call the option number two and go on a date with that girl instead. This is why, ladies, I constantly tell you don't do last minute with the guy. Because by accepting the last minute, you might actually put yourself in a position of the option number two, which of course you do not want to do. Number four, so it says to men to practice to approach women. So to keep approaching women wherever we go, so we get confident with it. But to be picky, to be fussy, and to go for really beautiful women. But once you approach a beautiful woman, do not compliment her in order to keep her intrigued and not to give her value. Um, I had this so many times as well. What guys do, we approach you with sometimes nasty or negative comments, thinking that we're keeping her intrigued that way as she's getting the top compliments all the time. And yes, there is some truth in that. If a girl is damaged, if she has problems, if you're approaching a woman that's broken with a negative comment, yes, sometimes it can work, However, if a woman is healthy, if she knows her value and worth, she will see a negative comment as a disrespect and you will immediately turn her off. Also, some men don't do these negative comments straight away. What we do, we actually start to get to know a girl and then we slowly start to make negative comments about you. So for example, a negative comment about how you look like, a negative comment about the dress you wear, a negative comment about your business. We basically start to plant seeds of negativity. So you, in your mind, would start to lower your value and you would feel like he is more valuable than you are. Again, it's a form of a manipulation, such a disgusting proper abuse, ladies. And if you want to know how to handle this nonsense, check out my video right here, how to set in healthy boundaries with people. Number five, do everything to make her jealous genuinely. This genuine stuff that making a woman jealous, this is so popular, it's like, it's becoming the oldest trick in a book. So let me give you a story where you're trying to make a woman jealous genuinely. So a lot of guys do it by referring to their female friends. A genuine jealousy example could be something like you're in a car with a guy and he tells you how he dropped off his female friend to a hospital just an hour before picking you up and he calls her three or four times in front of you to check in on her and on a phone call of course he's very nice to her he's asking her do you want some snacks 
Do you want some water? When shall I pick you up? How do you feel? This way he's kind of trying to make you jealous genuinely and is trying to show off what a nice guy he is. The only thing that you can do to this is just you don't react you can say oh well done you you look after your friends that's so good if he sees that his game is not working he might start to share more details between a relationship with him and that woman so to try and make you more insecure what you do in this case you just kind of look bored you ignore it because he's basically doing everything in his power to create a show for you kind of show off what a nice guy he is how other girls like him and to make you jealous what to do when he's trying to make you jealous check out my video right here then the number six the next strategy is the goal is to get a woman to sleep with you within four to ten hours and in this book, it's promising that you will definitely be able to do that. And uh, it's also, of course, sharing how to kiss a woman, where to kiss her to quicker turn her on so she cannot resist you. Number seven. Well, this makes me laugh so much because with this one, so many guys look so silly. So, for example, you have to make yourself look as a tribal leader at all times, as it says in the book. So a tribal leader as in like you need to come across as a leader in any kind of place or setting. If you take this advice a bit out of hand, which a lot of men do, then they with you, we try and be the boss in every step that we take. So for example, if you are going dancing together, let's say you're going to dance bachata and he is a bad dancer, yet he wants to sound like that tribal leader, he might start coaching other people how to dance just to be that tribal leader and try and impress you. Remember one client told me that she was walking with her boyfriend and out of the blue, he started to shout at this homeless person for no reason whatsoever. So this is another bad example of being a tribal leader. Another bad example could be where you're in a situation or you're in a place where you have no clue what people are doing. You're trying to come across as the tribal leader, like you know everything. So, of course, people around you are not stupid. When you're totally clueless on the topic and you're trying to come across smart, I mean, what's gonna happen is at the end of the day, you'll just come across attention seeking, insecure, and silly. Number eight, so I kind of lost count. I'm sorry about that, but I think I'm on number eight. Be desperately socially active. This is another thing that turns me off. I don't know how it can possibly be a turn on. It's like guys who are desperately socially active. They go to every single party, they go to every single event. I mean, to me, that just looks like a man who does not have his life in order, who's just wasting his life, who doesn't have goals, dreams, who doesn't take any responsibility for his life. So to me, it just looks somebody that's trying to live a toxic life, who's partying hard, looks really toxic and low value. So I really, really don't get this step. It works again on some like really toxic low value women. Try to party hard as well. Then if both of you, all you do is party hard, I mean long term, where does party hard lead? Uh, depression, suicidal thoughts, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, and so on. So if you could tell me please in the comments below, how is this high value? Yeah, I would, I would really appreciate that. Number nine, persistence. Okay, this is hot. I love persistence. I personally do love persistence. So I find persistence really attractive. Saying that, the way persistence is mentioned in the book, it can also be dangerous. With persistence, the reason I like persistence is because it makes you feel special. It makes it look like the guy is actually interested in you. That's why I love persistence. Saying this, the way it's described in a book, it can actually be pretty dangerous. What it says in a book, if a woman is in your house, 
and Lord forbid she steps into your bedroom, basically it tells the guy to, you know, do the kind of foreplay of kissing and all of that. And if she tries to resist, just don't take no for an answer. So in many cases, you put yourself in a very dangerous situation. And number two, you're kind of manipulated or seduced, I would say maybe seduced is a better word, to have sex with a guy. So ladies, um, this is why I always say, unless the guy is your boyfriend, don't step into his flat. Number 10, where these guys go right, because if they would do everything wrong, of course we would just lose interest very, very quickly and things just wouldn't go anywhere. So what we do, we ask for a date, they confirm the dates and they do show up. And we can come across as men of their word, which is a very high value characteristic in a man. And this is why a lot of girls fall into the trap. So perhaps he may not give you compliments, perhaps he puts you down here and there and you try and sit in boundary, but when he comes across as a man of his word and he asks you out, he arranges the day, he shows up and he comes up with something nice. This is quite cool and suppose this is how women get sucked in into this trap. Number 11 is trying to get her to invest into you. Because in the book it says the more she invests her time, um, the more she buys you stuff, the more she invests into you, the more she falls in love with you. So this is the part where he might try to get you to buy him stuff. I'm gonna be a bit cheeky and I'll share a story with you ladies. So this guy was coming to see me and there is a really lovely ice cream place next to my flat. And he says, look, I'm just gonna drop by for 10 minutes, um, but we have these 10 minutes, would you like to get some ice cream? And I'm like, yeah, ice cream sounds cool. Okay, Greta, so I'm on my way. Can you get me coffee gelato? And this is when I interrupted him and I said, oh, actually, I don't want ice cream anymore. And he says like, oh, oh, you don't want ice cream anymore. I said, no, I don't. I actually had ice cream today and I'm really full and I'm not hungry and I don't want ice cream anymore. And then he's like, oh, okay. So this is one of the examples of how he will try to get you to pay for him so you would invest more into him. Of course, this is a very low value approach as it's a man who should be generous and who should be charming and paying for a woman at least in the beginning stages of dating. So if you are a high value woman, this is gonna be a crazy, massive, big turn off. Number 12, it is recommended for a guy to invite her over to cook for her, but it's also recommended for him not to touch her the whole time. So she would get insecure, so she would get impatient and she would start to think like, maybe he's not attracted to me or what's going on? Here I am at his place and he's not really making any moves on me. Maybe I should show him that I'm interested in him. Maybe I should try and seduce him. This is the whole intention of this game. When a guy invites you over and he cooks for you or you guys are just doing something and he's not being touchy-feel with you because he is expecting you to chase him. Ladies, if you do like a guy and if he's not following this book, he's following some other stuff, and he invites you over and or you're on a date with him and he's not touching you is because he's hoping that eventually you will start to pursue him first. Obviously you do not do that as you are a lady and it's not your job to seduce a man and my queens if you will actually do do that. From now on, you just showed him that you're happy to pursue him. And since you're so good at pursuing, it is very likely that he'll leave his job just for you to do. Number 13, which I found really weird, it basically says to a man to respect yourself because if you disrespect yourself, you don't have any value. But 
how can you respect yourself and disrespect others? Because if you're disrespecting others, you're disrespecting yourself. So this I found very hypocritical, like it just does not make sense. As in the book, it does say like disrespect a woman, pick on her, bring her value down. So if you're disrespecting a woman, automatically you're disrespecting yourself as a man. So to me, this just did not make sense, but I thought I'll share it to two ladies. Some men apparently think that he can disrespect you and still respect himself. How does this work? I don't know. Number 14, this is a very interesting one. It says in the book that hand-holding leads to kissing. So ladies, when you're on a date with a guy and he starts to hold your hand, if he has read this book, the strategy is that he's holding your hand, so of course it feels nice and it feels good. But the next step then is kissing, cause hand holding leads to kissing. I actually do agree with this one. Number 15, mixed signals, of course. How can we have a book with no mixed signals? That's literally impossible nowadays, right? So mixed signals, so what are the mixed signals? A couple examples would be you, finally got the girl you had sex with her the next day you don't message her because you're trying to make her panic and to chase you so mixed signals is like one day you're hot next day you're cold so the idea is that when you are cold you're bringing her value down she starts to feel insecure and if she's a bit of a toxic girl that's not aware of this game, very likely that she will start to pursue you because she's feeling insecure. If she's a healthy girl who's very aware of hot and cold, she's gonna get turned off by it and she will either set in boundary by ignoring you or she'll just break up with you. Another example, let's say you went on a date, you swept a girl off her feet, next day you bump into each other and you're ignoring her. The ignoring part is to make a girl to feel a little bit less valuable than you, to make her feel insecure so she would pursue you. A girl that's not aware of this stuff will probably get insecure and message and call you. A girl that's very much aware of this stuff will most likely be like, Thank you, next. Number 16, a little example of a game to make you insecure again. So here is one. It says when you are out or you're in a club, spray a little bit on yourself a fem feminine perfume. And if your girlfriend or another girl comes up to you and says like, oh wow, you smell like there is some girl's perfume on you. Just kind of look like you're thinking and then do this cheeky grin kind of like, oh yeah, which will make you look like a ladies man, a cat or a very toxic player in other words. 17, another one of mixed signals. I want you, I don't want you. I want a relationship, I want to be single. It's the game that's a lot played by, I would say, guys in their teens or early 20s. It's to make a woman a bit insecure and kind of making yourself as a challenge. Technically, this game maybe would work if you actually would treat a woman right. With this book, you can't treat her right. There is just too much toxicity in it. But if you would actually do everything right, and when you say you want her, you don't want her, you want her, you don't want her, the intention is that she would ask for the relationship with you first. And the ball is in your court and as a man you get all the power and then you can say yes or no or I'm not ready or whatever else you decide. Ladies, ignore this stuff, stay patient, let him pursue and let him suggest a relationship with you first. Number 18, this is hilarious. If she dumps you, if she thinks you're not good enough, well then, yes, you have to step up your game. This is what it says in the book. You have to step, step up your game. You have to improve yourself, buy that new apartment, buy that new shiny car 
and of course the most important thing show up with a new girl it's ladies it's just all so silly and funny and immature but hey guys read it we follow it so you kind of have to be aware of this stuff um number 20 it's a smooth game it's a smooth game and with number 20 this is why i say ladies whatever he says to you in the dating stages don't pay too much attention to it because he's just trying to charm you so the number 20 is an example that's given in the book is for example if you're with your friends at the party you say oh i need to get back to my friends you might make a comment saying oh yeah let's go back to our friends that way giving you a level of security and making you trust him or another example could be he could very quickly start to introduce you to his friends and say my friends are your friends to show how trustworthy he is this is falls into a category of where a guy says to you that i love you first or i like you first very quickly or introduces you to family and friends or gives you this type of comfort and security very very quickly without really even knowing you it's a big fat red flag that he's trying to make you think that you can trust him so he can quickly get into your bed and the number 20 the whole book the writer seems to be into evolution he seems to be into the universal laws into the universe so evolution is more like atheism universe and universal laws this is very kind of law of attraction based then he talks about Kabbalah, so you know, if you're a Christian, this is red flags all over us in Christianity. All of these are considered very, very enemy-like, you know what I mean, ladies. The truth mixed with lies is the power of deception, and this is how the enemy works as he is the master of all lies by the way i have not did this research myself but i have heard that now niall strauss is happily married and he's teaching people against these books that he has written himself and he himself is referring to them as toxic is this true or not i'm not sure but this is what i have heard and i'm actually hoping to be the truth so ladies, if you enjoyed my video, please press like. Let me know in the comments below what did you think. Join Greta's High Value Woman School where we are all in the same boat, learning how to be women of high value and bring out the best in our men. Follow me on my Instagram. My Instagram is called Ladies Relationship Coach. And for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or a member of my team, book me through my website, which is called gretabrishita.com. If you would like to know the games men play on women, how to stay attractive via text, how to love yourself, how to get your ex back, how to control your emotions, or perhaps you have a little hobby that you would like to make into an online business, I have all of these videos for sale on my website called gratitudeshita.com. Thank you for watching. Kisses from uh, Dorset. Mwah.